I am Ellen White. Um, I'm also known as Nikki. So throughout the episode, um, you'll hear me refer to myself as Nikki, but um, I do go by Ellen White as well. And welcome to Black and a Berry. Thank you guys for joining me. Just to give you guys a rough um, draft. I don't know why I said rough draft, but whatever. Uh, just to give you an introduction, um, Black and a Berry is a channel that I decided to make. Black of the Berry is a channel that I decided to um, to begin because I wanted to inform a lot of um, my people about um, African Americans out there that maybe not a lot of people um, have heard of. They haven't heard their stories. They haven't heard their struggles. And you'd be surprised what uh, some of our ancestors have gone through that um, we're probably going through today that we really didn't know about. So um, I just kind of wanted to just enlighten and educate uh, my people while also bringing uh, beauty to, um, to the forefront as well. So beauty for me is um, definitely nostalgic. It's something that I really enjoy doing and I am passionate about when it comes to me. Um, I do beauty uh, as far as hair, makeup, nails, um, skin care, all that kind of stuff um, because it relaxes me. Um, it takes my mind from the everyday anxieties and nervousness and um, just stresses of the world, um, especially here lately. And so I figured, why not have beauty in conversation? Um, I think that beauty in conversation is something that we should do often. Uh, you know, get your friend girls or girlfriends, guy friends, um, and, you know, sit down and do each other's makeup and really just talk about nothing. Um, and if you do want to talk about something, why not educate yourself, yourselves and each other um, not just about our ancestors, but also about people of today and um, what uh, barriers are being broken down by our people today. Um, and like I said, you'd really be surprised as to uh, what's going on in the world and the stories that people have that are similar to ours. And so um, I just figured, you know what, let me do some makeup and let me just educate some people Um Whoever would like to watch and join, um, I'd really appreciate it. Um, if you find that you like beauty and conversations and you enjoy watching me um, apply my makeup, sometimes I might fail because I am by no means a professional. I do my own makeup. I very seldom do other people's makeup. Um, I, I don't like to venture out in that way. This is strictly for me and my soul. But um, why not, you know, watch some beauty, have some conversation. And if you happen to enjoy it, um, I definitely love for you to subscribe, like, and even comment. And you know what? I'm open to dragging. I understand that you're probably going to drag me and you're going to clock a few things, but I'm open to that and I can handle it. Okay. So um, I guess let's get started. Okay. So uh, first off, let me start off by saying that um, I am going to first um, prime my face and um, I've already done my skincare for the day, sunscreen, all that good stuff. So I'm going to prime my face. Um, and then also, if you guys are interested in products that um, I'm using on um, an episode, um, just comment and you guys can tell me if you would like for me to link them below. Um, but as far as um, me just talking about the products and uh, what brands I'm using and all that good stuff, it kind of won't be part of a part of uh, beauty and conversations. Um, it's mainly the bulk of beauty and conversations will mainly be um, about uh, whatever topic I'm speaking on. Um, and speaking of which, today we're going to talk about Miss Henrietta Lacks, honey. Um, I don't know if many of you know much about Henrietta Lacks, but she was pretty much um, a diamond in the rough um, as far as the um, 
medical industry goes. So just a brief, I don't even know what to call it, but just a little tidbit about me. I am a nurse. Um, and I found uh, this story extremely interesting when I heard about um, when I heard about her. So I first heard about her um, actually um, a couple years ago. Um, and the reason I heard about her is because her um, cells have actually been used um, in a lot of research study for uh, the medical field as far as things such as cancer and polio. Um, her, she's basically known as the immortal woman. Um, her cells have been uh, helping in research in the medical field for, wow, I know since like the 19, uh, basically since the 1950s, which is a long time. I mean, she's contributed so much to the medical field. Uh, Henrietta was really born um, Loretta Pleasant. Um, not really sure how she got the name Henrietta, but her nickname was Henny. And she was born in uh, Roanoke, Virginia um, in August of 1920. Uh, she, when she was four years old, she basically, um, her mother was giving birth to her 10th child. And um, she basically died um, after she gave birth to her 10th child. So... Um, Henrietta and her sisters and brothers were left with her dad. Um, so her dad pretty much didn't know how to take care of uh, Henrietta and the rest of the kids. Um, so he pretty much was like, okay, you know what? I don't really make enough money. I don't, you know, I don't know if I can take care of all these kids. So he basically had the kids separated, pretty much. And some kids went with the grandfather, uh, including Henrietta. And um, while Henrietta was living with, um, her grandfather, she shared a room with like her cousins. Um, I believe it was two cousins or something like that. Um, she shared a room with two of her cousins, one of which um, was a male and his name was Day. Day Lack. Day Lack, who was her cousin, um, is actually the guy that she ended up marrying <laughs> uh, and having kids with. I know, right? Uh, I was pretty shocked when I heard about this myself. But um, she pretty much uh, grew up in her grandfather's home. Um, and she eventually uh, started having babies at like the age 20. No, I'm lying. Sorry. Uh, she started having babies at like 14. She had her first child at 14 years old. Um and like I said, it was with Day Lax, who was her cousin. Um, I'm not sure if it was like a first cousin, second cousin. I don't really know how that went down. But um, it just, all the research that I have found was saying that it was pretty much her cousin. Um, and she had her first child at 14, and it was a boy. And his name was Lawrence. Um, and then she ended up having another child named Elsie. Now, um, Elsie, I think was, I guess it, she had, she was born with what you would call, um, developmental disabilities. And, um, so she was a little bit difficult, you know, to take care of in a way, um, but, um, Henny or Henrietta, she was able to, you know, she was able to deal with it. Uh, Elsie was very, she was very much so loved. Pretty much after um, Elsie was born, um, Henrietta and Day Lax got married. And then um, they ended up working on a tobacco farm. Well, I know 
um, Henrietta ended up working on a tobacco farm. Um, but she did some tobacco farming for a while. Um, and then one of Dave, Dave's cousins um, talked them into eventually moving to Maryland. Um, he got them to move out there. I believe there was a job um, that they wanted to, um, it was a steel, I think it was a steel making job or something like that, but uh, they ended up moving out there for a job in which they got the job. Um, she ended up having the, the oldest boy and then there was um, Elsie. And then after that, there was another boy, a girl, and then the last one was a boy, I believe. Um, I believe she had five kids. And then um, after she had her last child, um, she started to notice that she had this, uh, I guess it was like a lump or something, like a nodule or a lump inside of her on her cervix. Um, and so she went to the only hospital that would treat um, colored or you know African-Americans at that time. Now by this time, it was like the 1950s. It was like 1950s. So she went to the only hospital that uh, would treat African Americans at that time. And that hospital was none other than Johns Hopkins. So I'm uh, just to pause here, I'm gonna take a damp sponge and just kind of go over my foundation a little bit, um, just to kind of get like a dewy-ish kind of a finish, more natural-like finish. She went to Johns Hopkins and basically, you know, told them what she was feeling. She kept telling them she felt like, you know, she had a dot on inside of her. Um, and so they basically did some tests and did some research and found that she had, um, uh, basically she, they found that she had a tumor on, um, on her cervix. They did a lot of radi radiation and radium uh, treatment for that type of like cervical cancer type of thing. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to add some concealer to this face. Now the look that I'm doing today is basically just a, um, just a basic kind of everyday kind of a look. I'm not really doing too much of nothing really I really don't have any plans to go anywhere but uh after she had the last child of course um um she ended up having what she felt was like a nodule or a knot inside of her um and she also had some like vaginal bleeding and so she went to Johns Hopkins where um this is where she also had like her last her last child she gave birth to was at Johns Hopkins. And um, when she, she went there with vaginal bleeding um, and she kind of just let them know, you know, hey, I'm, I feel this knot on the inside of me. I have this vaginal bleeding. Um, and then they uh, pretty much did some tests and all of that and found that, um, she basically had cervical cancer. Um, now, when they began treating her for the cervical cancer, um, they started to treat her with like these radium kind of tube inserts. Um, they also took biopsy. So they took a biopsy of the cancerous uh, tumor that was inside of her. And then they also did a biopsy of, uh, took a biopsy of her good cells and tissue. Okay. So, mind you, when they took this biopsy and they, uh, of the cancerous cells or the cancerous tumor and her good uh, cells, they did not ask permission. So, this was unbeknownst to um, the family. This was um, unbeknownst to Henny herself. So, um, like I said, Johns Hop Hopkins did a lot of research in the 1950s. 
Um, and at the time, the law did not require for you to have to ask permission uh, to get any type of consent, permission, or anything like that from the patient and or the family for a biopsy, which nowadays would not fly um, at all. Um, you have to have consent for everything, just FYI. I don't know if you know anything about the medical field, but um, you have to have consent for everything. So they have good, healthy cells, and then they have the malignant tumor cells. And so um, she goes through chemotherapy and radi radiation and radium treatment and all of that stuff. And then at one point, um, they end up taking, like she ends up going home. So they end up discharging her at some point. But um, once she was discharged and home, um, she basically wasn't home too long before she decided, like she knew something else was wrong with her. She could feel like something just wasn't right. Uh, she knew she was not doing well and she felt like, you know what, something, like she still had some symptoms going on. So she ended up... Uh, going back to John Hopkins. Now, mind you, she does not know that these people have already taken her cells, uh, good and bad, and started doing research with it. So there is this doctor at John, Hop John Hopkins that his name is Dr. Gay Gee, G-E-Y. Um, and he had her cells in his lab. When Henny got back to the hospital, um, she ultimately, that's ultimately where she ended up dying. By that time, um, the cancer was just full-blown spread. They didn't even find out that it had metastasized until about, I think after she died, they did more um, research and uh, they did the autopsy on her body and that's when they ended up finding out that the cancer had pretty much spread to her entire body. Once she died, the Dr. Guy, or Dr. Gay, however you pronounce his name, I don't really know. I don't know if it's German or what, but Dr. Guy, Gay, whatever. Uh, he basically told his, um, he basically told his lab assistant to go in there and get more of her cells. Um, again, so the body is in the morgue um, on the table and he tells the assistant to go in there and go in there and give me some more of them cells please because he knew that something I'm just going to set my concealer really quickly uh, he knew that he had discovered something when he was researching her cells so um he had the lab assistant go in and get more cells from her. And what he ended up discovering was that her cells were able to basically grow without the host. So basically they had cells. She had these cells that were pretty much continue to just divide and regenerate pretty much. So, um, so she had immortal cells. So she was able to pretty much live forever. Um, even though she, her body was gone, these cells would continue to divide, continue to grow, and continue to regenerate. That's pretty much why they call her um, the immortal woman. So Dr. Gay, Gee, whatever, uh, decided to name the cells from, so the name ended up being the HeLa cells. And HeLa comes from the first two letters of her first name and then the first two letters of her last name because they could not use the actual name of the specimen or the person that the cells came from. So um, they pretty much told the God, the, the people over Dr. Gee, gay, whatever, uh, told him, um, you cannot use the name. 
we can't people can't know where it came from so he decided to call it the Gila cells and the Gila cells are still being used to this day just FYI they're still being used to this day so y'all listen I, I have to get up in this crack in this nose I know y'all probably looking like what the heck is she doing but when I tell y'all this is like where I break up um, where I get like super duper duper oily and all that kind of stuff it's always like t-zone area and like right me yeah I mean I kind of turn into an oil slick so I always put my finger in here <laughs> put my finger in my nose and kind of get off in there and I like to set it real quick um whatever I don't I know some of y'all probably looking like why is she doing them like that I don't really care but that's just me and that's how I do it and that's what I'm gonna do so whatever but at any rate um back to the story so so remember that uh Miss Henny had no idea that um they took her cells and the family had no idea that they took her cells so the whole time they have been researching, they have been discovering things, they have been healing people. They even came out with a vaccine for polio because of Miss Henrietta's immortal cells. Okay, Be these HeLa cells were so huge at this time. Remember, this is like the 1950s, so 1950, 1951. So th this was huge huge back then um they were selling they they try to deny it's alleged that they were uh selling it's alleged that they were selling the cells to different um biomedical corporations and different uh research uh places and all this hospitals but it was basically like a black market for HeLa cells pretty much the family had not consented to this. They were not aware of what was going on. I don't even think that they ended up finding out what was going on until like 1970 something. I think it was like 1970 is when they ended up figuring out what, you know, what was going on. Somehow they, someone told them what was going on. Um, now also, uh, when she went, when Miss Henrietta Lacks went to the hospital, um, her daughter Elsie, that's the daughter, the second born that ended up having the um, the, the developmental disabilities, um, she ended up being admitted into a mental hospital, pretty much. And um, when she went into the hospital, when she got admitted into the mental health hospital, she was there about the same time her mom got admitted into john hopkins and then elsie ultimately ended up dying like a year later in the mental health hospital she ended up dying at the age of 15. um so this just left the four the uh, the four children so it left uh three boys and then one one daughter she left one daughter and then her husband uh day as well um so i'm just gonna finish doing my eyebrows I kind of combed them up a little bit but just gonna finish up doing my eyebrows well let me outline first I think I want to outline my eyebrows first and then I'll go in and kind of fill them in or whatever they don't really need filling in too much what do you guys think I normally like to just uh comb them up I don't really like to do too too much to my eyebrows um feel like I have a good amount of eyebrows I think I just need to like fill in certain spots what do you, I mean you know what do you guys think if you had eyebrows like this what would be your suggestion because I personally don't really like to do too too much to my eyebrows I uh, don't even really remember where I left off but um uh the four bull I mean the four kids and then day lax so he um he had no clue um that his wife's cells were being used at all um 
but they were they were definitely being used to to heal people with cancer and to uh help people with like i said with the polio vaccine you name it it has basically been a huge part of um a part of the medical field in a way especially for research it, i think it was even a part of hiv discovering um, a lot of stuff with AIDS, HIV, diabetes. I mean, literally, you name it, she was, Miss uh, Lax was a part of it. Um, the family ended up finding out about, um, the family ended up finding out, you know, in the 70s about what was going on uh, with, their their uh, loved ones, Miss Penny's self, and found out that they had basically been using those cells. By the time they found out, it was like the 1920s, so basically 20 some odd years maybe, uh, that their mother's cells were pretty much being researched um, and were a part of saving a lot of lives. Um, and... They were not being compensated for this. 20 something years, they had not been compensated. Not one penny went to the family. They also tried to deny the fact that uh, they were selling the HeLa cells. So they basically, I, basically they were taken to court and um, the family took them to court and they tried to prove, you know, that, hey, we haven't been compensated for this. Um, you know, how they didn't even ask permission to get my mother's cells or my wife's cells. Um, and not only that, not only did they not get consent, not only did they not ask us permission, but we are not even being compensated for this. Um, mind you, she was pretty, she was fairly young when she went into the hospital. And uh, her kids, the last three children, really didn't get to uh, know her that well and really didn't, they were pretty young, so they didn't get a chance to, you know, learn her likes and dislikes and get to know, you know, know about her, uh, what's her favorite color or uh what's her favorite foods or what kind of foods does she despise like they didn't they didn't get a chance to um really just get to know their mother like that and then, it, with the exception for Lawrence Lawrence was pretty he was older I think he was like about 15 when she died so he um he remembered you know their mother pretty well but the last three did not um, and so their mother is pretty much this amazing woman um, whose cells continue to live on and they had no idea. And basically the court ruled in the, ho in the hospital's favor, which uh, pretty much sucked. I am going to set my face with some powder really quickly. They ended up not having to pay them any money, unfortunately. Um, and right now, uh, I, I digress a little bit, but I am just um, setting my face with some powder um, just everywhere that I didn't set with that, uh, everywhere that I didn't set um, the first time. I'm just going to come down here a little bit. But yeah, so they ended up losing the lawsuit. Uh, John Hopkins did not have to pay them any money unfortunately um which at that time john hopkins was the only hospital that would even treat um african americans so it was almost like they could do black people any which way honestly um but now um i do know that they have dedicated a lot to uh henrietta Lacks. john hopkins has i guess tried in a way to make up for the fact that they had not taken consent and that they um, did not pay the family and have not compensated the family um, in any way. But uh, the 
the um john hopkins did kind of give the family like pictures of um their mother self i am going to go ahead and set my face really fast so this is one of my favorite parts so i can't talk about the story right now while i'm spraying because this is just like a heavenly like an aromatherapeutic type of thing for me so let me go ahead and smell it Um, but anyway, guys, that's basically the story of Miss Henrietta Lacks and herself. Um, now she's getting a, a whole lot more, uh, uh oh, you guys, I didn't prime my eye. Y'all have no idea how horrible I am when it comes to eyeshadow and primer and all that kind of stuff. I just... I don't know. Eyeshadow is something that I just have not mastered yet. So my apologies, y'all, because I'm not the best. I don't really do like too many shimmers or anything like that um, because I have hooded eyes and I'm still not uh, the best at um, at doing eyeshadow. So I try. I, I don't know. I stay away from a, like a lot of shimmers and stuff like that. Um, because I just don't, I'm not experienced enough to start putting on a bunch of like glitter and shimmers. I stay in my lane, honey. I don't deviate too much from it, but you guys can tell me, you know, how you think my eyeshadow turned out. If the matte look works for me, um, if you feel like it doesn't work for me, like that's the whole point of this channel is not just to educate and uh, talk about, you know, um, African Americans um, and all that kind of stuff. But it's also to talk about makeup and to talk about, you know, the struggles of learning how to do it. Um, I was talking to my coworkers the other day and I was just telling them, you know, like, we, cause, okay, so here's the thing. Sometimes I watch YouTube videos while I'm at work. And 99.9% .9 of them are about makeup. Don't judge me, okay? I need a break. I can have a 15 or a 30 minute break saving lives as well. But, um, you know, I've even got a couple of my coworkers <laughs> watching them too. I mean, that's pretty much, if I have a break, um, that's what I'm pretty much watching are YouTube videos. And I have discovered that you know, when I try to recreate these looks and, you know, all that, my looks never turn out the way they do on the video. And I thought to myself, hell, how many other people out there are struggling like me with learning this whole makeup thing? Like, is it a struggle for you guys as well? Like, are y'all out here, you know, in these streets like me, like a beginner and, you know, having a hard time learning how to do makeup? And then when you go to makeup tutorials, um, it's, I mean, yeah, it helps for sure with different techniques and things like that. But at the same time, it's like, um, you know, I, some of us are not, our faces aren't shaped the same. And, uh, you know, some of us have hooded eyes. Um, you know, some of us have deep set eyes. Some of us have um, more Asian eyes or... Um, you know, some of us have really bad bags under our eyes. So, you know, I just, I don't know. I just kind of felt like, you know what, on my journey of learning this thing called beauty and makeup, uh, why not just bring some followers with me that understand that the struggle is real, okay? Uh, this is difficult to learn on your own, and not all of us have the funds and the money to have makeup artists or have someone you know teach teach it to us and 
heck not a lot of us have enough money to even buy half the damn makeup to be real i mean let's just keep it all the way a hundred you know i'll go ahead and set these and then also like i i kind of feel like the point of what i do and why i started this channel is to just really converse and get ideas from you guys um as well as maybe i can maybe give some some ideas um but it i want to bring you guys on the journey with me to learn about this stuff and really just uh teach myself like how to really do makeup i feel like i can struggle with you guys and i can succeed with you guys you know what i mean um i i don't see a reason why i have to hide that i don't know what i'm doing i don't see a reason why i can't start a channel and not know what i'm doing and then just kind of get some pointers from you guys so i'm just gonna put on a little blush just on the apples of my cheek not too much i'm i'm not really big on blush um to be honest with you i'm just doing it because y'all are watching me i'm not too huge on blush at all um not really that big on highlighter either so i'm just adding a little bit of uh concealer right under my eyebrow i don't like to put too too much but it helps to define the eyebrow this is what I like to do. You guys don't have to do it. It's just something that I enjoy and I like the look. And like I said, I understand that I don't do, you know, the best job and I'm not claiming to do the best job. I'm not. This is just what I do for me. This is just what, you know, works for me. And who says that there are rules to this game? Um, I think the main thing that I've found out of watching um, all these makeup tutorials for the past few years is that there are literally no rules to this, like, at all. Um, and I enjoy that. That's what I love the most about makeup is that you don't have to be um, the, mo the best at makeup um i just think that knowing a little bit is enough and then you just do what works for you and that's what i do so i'm gonna take some liner and line my lips and then i just add in a little bit of gloss just a little bit of gloss not not too much I'm going to spray my face one more time with my mist. And listen, y'all will get used to this, but I love spraying my face with mist. So I'm going to spray it one more time. Okay, guys. So here's the final look. What do you think? You guys let me know what it what you think. I don't know. I call this my I don't really have too much to do today, but I want to be pretty when I do it. Look. <laughs> I um hope that this was um educational. I hope that this was enlightening for you. I hope it was relaxing for you. Um it's certainly relaxing for me. And it helps to kind of take my mind off of what's going on in the world today. So I hope I was able to do that for you. Thank you guys for joining me at Blacker the, Bl the Berry. I'm so sorry, y'all can't even talk. <laughs> but thank you guys for joining Blacker the Berry. Uh, we hope, I hope to see you again. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Um, and give me some ideas about who you'd like for, to discuss next. Who would you like to talk about and who would you like for me to do some research on and maybe you can kind of teach me some things um maybe about makeup perhaps maybe about some more products and um 
some techniques and stuff that you guys like to use. But um, it was a pleasure, guys. And please, 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 please be good to one another, especially um, to your brothers and sisters. Uh, I thank you for joining me. And until next time at Black of the Berry, bye. Really quick, guys, I just wanted to up, just kind of give you a natural light kind of vibe for my makeup and you guys can kind of see what it looks like in natural light so yeah just tell me what you guys think and um maybe i can incorporate some new different tips and tricks and techniques into the next look bye